Good morning, everyone. I hope you and your families are doing well. In today's halacha, we're going to talk about more cases related to meat and dairy, but I will start first with the concept of Hisur Hama'a that we mentioned yesterday. As we know, one of the aspects of Basar Behalav, meat and dairy mixed together, is that if it was cooked together, you're not allowed to have benefit from them. Now, when we said benefit, we spoke about selling the meat, but selling the, the mixture. But technically speaking, even to give it out to a non-Jew is also a sword, even if you don't know that person. That's also falling under the same category of Isur Hana'a. Also giving it out to a dog, even if it's not your dog, if it's a Hefker dog, not allowed. Even to throw it to the, uh, let's say, to a lake, and there are fish there that may eat the mixture, also not a sword. So the bottom line is that when we talk about Isur Hama'ain, Basar Behalav, what it means is that it needs to be buried. In our days today, it's not like we're going to ask you to dig a hole in your backyard, but you could just flush it down the toilet, and that will be really the best way to get rid of this uh, problem. Now, interesting halakha, side point about the Isur Hama'a, is if, let's say you have butter that was uh, cooked together with meat, so it became all together a sort. Let's say that you want to take the butter, melt it, and make olive oil for Nerot Hanukkah. That's an interesting question. And the answer is Halakha allows to do it, because mitzvot lav lehanot nitenu. Especially the Ner Hanukkah, that it's a sort to have benefit from it. The whole purpose of Hanukkah is to look is to look at them, but not to have benefit from them. That's why you're not allowed to count your money next to the Nerot Hanukkah. So therefore, you're not really having a Isur Hana'a, and that will be mutar. Now let's talk about cases where you have either meat cooked in a dairy pot or dairy that is cooked in a meat pot. So the halakha says that it depends. If you have more than 24 hours that have passed between the time that you cooked, let's say dairy, it's a dairy pot, and you used dairy inside that pot more than 24 hours ago, it's not been your more. And in this situation, the halakha considers that the ta'am, the taste that is inside the pot, is pagum. It's not really a good taste. So it does not really affect the basar, the meat that you cook right now. And the mixture is allowed, which means that the basar that you cook inside would be mutar. What you do with the pot is a different story, but the meat itself is allowed. Now let's say that you for sure know that one night has passed since the last time that you used it. But you don't know if it's 24 hours. Are you allowed? So in this situation, the halakha still allows to do it. Why? Because we have a safek sefeka. Maybe you had 24 hours at past, and even if you didn't have 24 hours at past, maybe the halakha is like Rabbein Utam, who said that if you have linat layla pogemet, which means that according to Rabbein Utam, even one night is sufficient to give a ta'am pagum to the dairy taste that is inside the pot. Mita'am safek sefeka, we will allow it. However, if it happened within 24 hours, you know for sure that it was within 24 hours that you used this part for dairy. So the meat that you have inside will be a sorbi achila. You're not allowed to have it because you definitely have a mixture of the ta'am, the taste of the dairy that is inside your meat. And you will not be allowed to eat it. When it comes to the isur hana'a, once again, it's a little bit edgy because you have a safek if it's a sorbi in torah and Chacham Obadiah allows the Hanna'a L'Tzorech Hefset Gadol. If you have a really big loss, he allows the Hanna'a in such a situation because it's a Safek Yisol Min Torah. Now, everything that I mentioned about those, mix, those uh, uh, the, the ingredients that are cooked inside the dairy part or the meat part is only when you have absolutely no residue of the dairy uh, food that was cooked b- before that. If, however, you have actual mamashut, meaning you have dairy inside the pot and you cook meat mamash, then we fall into the laws of what we call batel beshishim, which means that you have to have 60 times more uh, quantity of meat than you have of dairy. And if not, then it becomes a really big, big problem for the actual food inside and for sure for the pot itself. On this, I wish you all an amazing and safe day.